look at all of these cool license plates. These are actual real license plates that I've seen and taken pictures of. So I talked about signs in the previous video, but I want to single out these three types. License plates, want to single out these three types, license plates, feathers, and music, because this is the primary way that my spirit team, specifically Mark, speaks to me. But most especially so that you can understand the elaborate lengths that spirit often goes to to communicate with us. So to our human mind, it seems impossible to think that something outside of our physical reality could determine what when and where music shows up in our lives. But we have to remember that spirit is not limited by the laws of the physical world. And since music is created purely from, from vibration, it is something that the other side can easily use to communicate with us. So people commonly report hearing songs that remind them of their loved ones. And songs can show up and catch your attention at home, when you're out and about somewhere, when you're thinking of that person, or maybe when you're even not thinking about them. Either way, you may even hear lyrics that feel like you have been given a very special message or an answer to something that you were thinking about. Music is a wonderful gift from the other side. Every medium who has ever brought Mark through since his death has told me that Mark communicates with me through music, and the evidence for this is irrefutable. Music is definitely his primary method of communicating to me, which makes sense because he was a professional musician, and music also connected us before he died. So for me, it's not just hearing a song because there are many times that I could hear a song on the radio that would remind me of Mark, but for me, it's about the song and the timing. So I'm going to share an example of what I mean. So it had been more than two years since Mark had passed away, and we were on our way to this hockey tournament for my son that was to take place about 45 minutes away from my house. And my husband was driving, my son was sitting in the front seat, and I was in the back working on my computer. And we exited the highway, and for whatever reason, I happened to look up from my work just in time to see the Holiday Inn Express through my window. And it was the hotel that Mark had stayed at back in August of 2008. We had had dinner together with the band at a Bennigan's restaurant, remember those, located inside the hotel. And this was the only meal that Mark and I had ever shared together. Our relationship had been primarily long distance. I all of a sudden, as I saw that hotel, had this image of he and I sitting in this booth together, having a conversation. When we finished our, our meal, Mark looked at me and said, if you didn't have kids, I would ask you to move to Texas to live with me. And thinking of that night evoked such strong feelings and really does even today. It was the night that ended everything between Mark and me, but the night before the hockey tournament, I had actually been listening to a top 40 countdown that I enjoyed on XM Radio's 80 on 8. But at that time, I really didn't listen to the 80s on 8 station very much. And the radio was still tuned into it. But about five seconds after we passed the Bennigan's restaurant, that radio station began playing We Built This City by Starship. And when I heard it begin to play, I actually started shaking and got a full adrenaline rush. That sign was one of the biggest confirmations I have ever gotten from Mark because of the significance of that night to me and because of those feelings. And it felt like Mark was letting me know that he felt the same. I had no control over the situation that allowed for the timing. I wasn't driving. And I know it might seem like such a simple thing, but the complexity of the timing was what made this so special. And specifically, my lack of control over the timing. A sign where all the stars align can give you so much confirmation and joy. 
And later on, after that hockey tournament, my husband was again driving. And this time he changed the radio station to one which so happened would not be playing any songs that I would associate with Mark, further corroborating the fact that the satellite XM radio had been queued up for me to receive that beautiful sign. Um, on one of my daily walks around the ponds, almost a year after Mark died, um, there was a song called Show and Tell by Al Wilson that started playing on my, my music that I was walking and listening. And the lyrics said, show and tell, just the game we play when I want to say I love you. And as that song played and that lyric played, my attention all of a sudden moved to this teeny white feather floating at my right side at eye level. And it followed me for a few feet and then it rose higher and higher and higher towards the east and it was continuing up into the trees and it was gone and I couldn't see it. And there were no other feathers that I saw that day. But I did notice the coincidence of the lyrics, I love you, playing as I saw the feather. And I felt that I was being given this beautiful message that day. So a couple of months later, I was driving to work and that song, Show and Tell by Al Wilson came on the radio. And I again had that thought about the tiny feather and how it had appeared the last time when the song was playing. And I talked to Mark and I was like, was that really you? Were you really sending that to me? And I exited the highway in a double turn lane. And there was a big truck in lane in front of me. And now normally I would have changed lanes and I would have raced around a slower vehicle, but I had, um, I didn't really want to miss the green light and I was going to be turning right. And I wasn't in a hurry that day. So I just stayed right where I was behind this semi truck. And all of a sudden in the left-hand lane, a car started passing me. It had a license plate that caught my eye and it said, music man, M-U-Z-C-M-A-N. And it happened so fast I could not take a picture of the car as it was passing. But I knew immediately that that was my confirmation because Mark, of course, was my music man as the lead guitarist of the band Starship. And I felt like he was saying, yes, yes, it was me sending you that message of love. And here I am again. So if I had been in that left-hand lane, I would have been in front of that car with that license plate that said music man. And my office was the next right-hand turn. And there's no way that I would have been able to see that car pass me. So it really made it so special, the timing of where I had to be and having that thought and asking a question and then immediately getting an answer from spirit. And as if I had any doubt at all, as I turned into that parking lot, the music began playing the sign by Ace of Bass, which has the lyrics that say, I saw the sign and it opened up my mind. I saw the sign. <laughs> so I really can't make these things up. Okay, now I'm going to share a story of a several things that happened over a period of a couple of years. So when I lived in Illinois, shortly after Mark died, I went to go see a concert. And on the ride home from the concert, I was talking to Mark in my mind. I was not driving. I was the passenger. And I said to him, were you there with me at that concert? Because in my mind, I would think in spirit form, he wouldn't miss an opportunity, right, to go with me to a concert. And as I had that thought, we pulled up behind a car that had the license plate that said soul mate. And I couldn't believe it. And I excitedly said, oh my God, is that you? Is that you? Are you sending me this soulmate plate? And we got on the highway and because I wasn't driving, I would have probably stayed behind that license plate, but um, I wasn't driving. And so the car was gone. And then a couple of seconds later, the Jefferson airplane, Jefferson Starship song with your love began playing on the radio. And I looked up and there it was, that license plate with the soulmate in front of me again. With your love. Since I met you. 
There was absolutely no doubt in my mind after that. At the time, of course, signs were so new to me that I was so left brain questioning and wanting all this proof. But that was pretty specific about asking him if he attended the concert, seeing the soulmate license plate, and then, of course, getting that Starship song to tie it all together. So fast forward several years ago. Um, Mark had been gone now since 2012 and it was 2018 and I was in the car with my sister in Arizona heading to a concert and I told her the story of how Mark had sent me that soulmate plate within about five minutes of telling that story I was behind a second license plate with the soulmate on it the one that you see here and I couldn't believe it. We drove behind that license plate for a long, long time. And remember that I told you in a previous video that one of the signs that Mark said he would send me was of the beavers. That's his animal sign that he sends me. And it's funny that I hardly ever get any beaver signs because I live in Arizona now and I'm not at a pond to see a beaver. But in any case, we're driving behind this license plate. So I'm sitting there at a red stoplight behind the car that says soulmate. We are in the left-hand lane and the light is green for the other people. And all of a sudden this car comes running through the intersection, running the red light, and now is in the far right-hand lane as our light turns green. So the car in front of me that says soulmate pulls forward and for about five seconds is next to this other car that's run the red light. And the license plate in that car says, go Beavers, B-V-R-S. And immediately that car turns right into a parking lot. What are the chances that Mark's special sign of Beavers is going to be next to a license plate that says soulmate minutes after I've told this story about seeing a license plate in Illinois that said soulmate spelled a different way? I was completely blown away. And of course, we're on our way to a concert, no less. So this is what I mean by a series of signs woven together to kind of tell a story in a very special way. Synchronicity is an event that random events happening in a way that makes sense to the person who is viewing it. And that was a beautiful confirmation. Uh, lastly, the last story I'm going to tell is that as I was getting ready to put these videos together, I, of course, over the years have collected lots and lots of license plates. I've taken pictures of them and I decided I needed to email them to myself so that I would be able to save them and download them to use them in my videos. So I sat there and I searched license plates and I pulled them all up on my phone as the photographs and I began this process of emailing it to myself. And it took about 20 minutes. And while I was emailing these to myself, my friend Melinda sent me a text message that had a picture of this twin flame license plate. I couldn't believe it. Here I am with all these license plates in this series of 20 minutes that I'm sending to myself at the exact moment that my friend happens to see a twin flame license plate where she is driving. So I just cannot believe the way that spirit can sometimes find these amazing signs and send us these confirmations. Okay, one last story. And this one is not connected to my love, Mark, but to my great grandmother, Alice Condra, who um, died when I was about 10 years old of colon cancer. And she was this amazing cook. And she taught me how to make pie crust from scratch. And so I have all these fond memories of cooking and I have some recipes that belong to her. So for whatever reason, a couple of weeks ago, I decided I was going to make this recipe of hers that is a, a pineapple bread pudding. And I know that might not sound very good to you, but it's delicious. And so I made this, this pineapple bread pudding and I happened to have four conversations about it, but it, where I related the story of making this, this uh, pineapple bread pudding. And I told my mom and my dad, and I told my sister and I told my friend. So fast forward the next day, 
I'm in the car and I'm going to dinner in a part of the city in Phoenix, Arizona that I had never been before. And I was really, really tired because the night before I had only gotten a couple of hours of sleep. And after the dinner party was over, I probably should have just left really quickly, but I felt bad and I felt like I should help stop and clean up before I left. So I did. And I helped them do some dishes and then I left. And as I was driving home, I was stopped off light. And all of a sudden, my attention was drawn to a license plate that had the name McKay on it. And my grandmother's, my great grandmother's maiden name was McKay. So I felt like she was giving me the shout out, letting me know that she was so happy that I was making her, her uh, baked pineapple bread pudding in her memory. And that's how it works. Our loved ones want us to know that they are around, that they know what's going on in our lives. They know that we're making things in their memory. And if we pay attention, they will send us signs to let us know that the message was received. So what a special, what a really special thing that happened.